What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is your favorite OCD list maker James with Mid Hunter Comics and today I thought we'd talk about first cover appearances of characters. I thought I'd give you my top 10, although it's not really a top 10 because I'm going to give you 10 Marvel and 10 DC and I'm going to sprinkle a couple indies in there. We are not going to talk about first appearances that showed these characters prominently on the cover. Rather, we're talking about characters that were introduced and then later they had their first cover appearance. In no particular order, let's get it started with Amazing Spider-Man issue number 59 from 1968. It is the first cover appearance of MJ. It's one of those cool covers that they were doing back then where they split the cover down the middle. A lot of the earliest depictions of MJ always had her as almost like a showgirl style, the ultimate girl next door, the ultimate playmate. Definitely a great one, but it's true. She existed in a few comics before this one got released. The Empire Strikes Back We Weekly issue 129 from 1980. Little lesser known one here. This is the first cover appearance of Boba Fett. It's funny, when all that Star Wars craze and all the Boba Fett books got big, I kept waiting for this book to get mentioned and no one seemed to be mentioning it. But it's a nice hefty Boba Fett related key here. And even though the color scheme may be a bit off, you can't deny that's a pretty sick cover. Now we got a little DC action with Green Lantern Volume 3, Issue 51. First cover appearance of Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner was introduced in Green Lantern 48. His first cover was in 51. And what a frickin' cover it is is. This is Kyle Rayner looking his, quite honestly, most iconic, and it does also happen to be his first main cover. This is still one of the best drawings of the character to date, and we got to enjoy it pretty much from the jump. Next up, we got Incredible Hulk issue 271 from 1982. First cover of Rocket. And for a while, this book was actually considered to be Rocket's first appearance until people got reminded that that actually appeared in a Satana book. And one thing that makes it so great is the whole acting jealous on the cover of his own book. That really sells it, makes it kind of a funny little thing for Hulk, which wasn't so common for the Hulk, and it gets to introduce us nicely to Rocket, who's now a household name. Earth 2, issue 25 from 2014, it is the first Valzod's cover appearance. That's right, this really cool, kind of very newer DC character that got introduced finally got his cover appearance here, and it's an awesome one, front and center, absolute great representation of the character, and one that has now become quite collectible in its own right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 10. It's the first cover appearance of Shredder. Front and center, here he is. This is the big bad to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe. A lot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle covers are kind of take it or leave it. This one you can't even argue. That's pretty iconic, pretty badass. Definitely says everything you need to know about Shredder. Next up, we got Daredevil issue 10 from 2000. It is the first cover appearance of Echo. Echo getting her first appearance the issue prior with issue 9. The first cover of Echo is quite good, quite memorable. I like the art style and I like the hand over the face. As a side note, I actually think that the casting they did for Echo for the MCU did a good job of trying to match it to this depiction, I think. Next up, another Star Wars book. We got Darth Maul number three, recent 2017 book. It is the first cover appearance of Cad Bane. It is not Cad Bane's first appearance, just like the rest of everyone else on this, but there he is over on the right there. And this is a cool, awesome, modern Darth Maul cover. Cad Bane being one of the biggest badasses in the Star Wars continuity, it's about time he got his cover and fans were really happy with this. Let's go early Silver Age, shall we, with Green Lantern number 9 from 61. Now, Green Lantern issue 7 is the first appearance of Sinestro, and it's one of the more ugly and somewhat forgettable first appearance covers. Two issues later in issue 9, Sinestro got his cover appearance, and it's the cover I think that everyone wished issue 7 looked like. Green Lantern's ultimate enemy, he's the Joker to Green Lantern's Batman. This and several of the covers that followed this are the best early depictions of Sinestro for sure. Next up we got another sad one on Canny X-Men 239. First cover appearance of Mr. Sinister. Can you imagine if this was the first appearance of Mr. Sinister? Sadly X-Men 221 I think, which is the first appearance of Mr. Sinister, he's just not there and it, it would have made that book a lot cooler I think if he was using this cover because this cover is really impressive, shows everything about Mr. Sinister. It's just bad ass. Flash Comics issue 92 from 1948. 
This is like the third or fourth appearance of Black Canary, but it is her first cover appearance. Similar to a lot of the ones on this list, this is the one that I personally really wished had been her first appearance cover. Her first appearance cover is a little bit of an odd one. It's got that old dinosaur thing going on there. It doesn't really do much for the character. This one kind of reminds me of Detective Comics 38, the first appearance of Dick Grayson. It's a cool welcoming of Black Canary to the reader. What a great first cover appearance. Next up, we got to talk about Namor the Submariner, who didn't get his first cover appearance until Marvel Mystery Comics issue number four. Does it get more classic than this? Namor fighting some not out at sea. I mean, that's really all that needs to be said about it, doesn't it? Next up is Avengers Annual 10. It is the first appearance of Rogue, Madeline Pryor, but it is the first cover appearance of Mystique. Even though it's very small image, she is on there, and I put it on this list mainly because I think a lot of people don't know it is the first cover appearance of Mystique. Finally looking also like how Mystique should be looking. Just another reason that that book is highly valuable. Next up, we got Invincible, issue 115 from 2014. We got the first cover appearance of Battle Beast. Yes, it took that long to get him on the cover, apparently. Wow. This is one of the most badass covers of one of the most badass characters from this universe. For those of you that didn't read the comics and only just saw the show, I'm sure you remember this dude giving a beating to our main character here. He's definitely one of my favorite characters from the Invincible books or show. And here he is prominently in a very collectible cover. Next up, we got the first cover appearance of Calypso with Daredevil issue 310. Again, front and center here, heavily stylized, creepy red and black colors here, used to drive home the fact that this is going to be one that you're going to remember. Unlike some of the books on this list that have quite some notoriety, I do actually feel that this one is a little on the underrated side. We're not here to talk about what I think underrated or overrated, but Nevertheless, I think that's true. Up next, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue 5 from 1985. Anti-Monitor. He had been introduced and been talked about and cameoed in the issues leading up to this. And then wham, they just do not hold back. Talk about a first cover appearance. Just his giant ass face staring you down right there. You can't hide from him here. And I think that's what they were going for. Star Wars Heir to the Empire, issue number four from 1996. It's the first appearance of Luke's wife, Mara Jade. And it's got that awesome painting-esque look that this run had. Now her first appearance comes with Heir to the Empire number one, but there was so much cool stuff that they had to fit onto that cover that she didn't make her first cover appearance until issue four. It's okay though, it turned out to be quite an excellent cover, and it's nice to have multiple keys to pick up instead of just one. Next up we got Flash issue 114 from 1960. It is the first cover appearance of Captain Cold. Don't forget, Captain Cold was introduced earlier on. This is his first cover here, nice and prominent there. Any Flash collector goes mad to pick this one up, and for good reason. Easily one of Flash's top three or perhaps four best villains to his name. This is a must have for any DC collector or Flash collector. Next up, we got one that does get a bit forgotten. We gotta talk about a little bit of Darkseid here. We're talking New Gods issue number two. Darkseid's a weird character because his first appearance was in Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, and it was the tiniest of first appearances. Forever People, number one, gave him another tiny cameo. But it really wasn't until the New Gods 2 that we got our kind of first full dark side, and he does happen to be on the cover this time. And it's the look that we know it today, Kirby-esque looking dark side. This is a book that does not get talked about enough, and really should be, because it's a great cover and a great key. Next up we got Walking Dead issue 33, which is the first cover appearance of the governor, who was introduced a few issues prior. The Governor is most likely fans of The Walking Dead's favorite villain. The themes and subject matter that go on within this issue, it's almost in bad taste to even show it. Let's just put it this way. Michonne had every right to be mad at the Governor. And I do like how the cover depicts it with Michonne's shadow casting over the Governor. One of the all-time greatest villains of our time. Now we're entering the top four, so you're gonna see some obvious ones here with Sensation Comics number one. One from 1942, the first cover appearance of Wonder Woman. Can you imagine if this was her first appearance cover? What already would have been a wildly valuable book? 
would just go tenfold. We'd probably see sales data comparable to that of Superman and Batman's first appearance. This is just the first cover appearance of her though, although it is much to look at, absolutely iconic, the most memorable one woman cover of that time. Next up we have Uncanny X-Men 266, it's the first cover appearance and first full appearance of Gambit. It's a controversial one because for years people thought it just flat out was also his first appearance, but there is that X-Men Annual 14 in which he's on many different panels and he's on several pages. They even drop his name. He has talking roles. It's a first appearance, but the market dictates this is the book to pick up. And I think the reason why is because it's an iconic cover coupled with the fact that people just had it wrong for quite some time. Can't deny that awesome cover. I just wish that it were his first appearance. Next up, we got Fantastic Four issue 49. We got a double whammy here because it's the first cover appearance of Galactus and the first cover appearance of Silver Surfer, both characters that were introduced the issue prior. Here though, they get the cover that they deserve and to this day, this makes for an amazing poster. I knew a guy in college that had this on his wall and he wasn't even into comic books. That's how iconic this cover is. Do I wish that this was the cover for 48? Maybe, but I do think 48's got its own charm. Regardless, this is a sick, first cover appearance. And the absolute number one, and I had to check my research like eight to 10 times before making this number one because I just couldn't believe it. We got the first cover appearance of Aquaman, which also happens to be the first cover appearance of Martian Manhunter with Brave and the Bold issue 28 which is known as being the first appearance of the Justice League. Now, Aquaman had been around for some time at this point, but he kept being in Superboy comics and different action comics. He was never featured on the cover. It took this long to really get him there. And frankly, I'll tell you right now, when I was making this list, I did not know that that was his first cover appearance. I did not know that this is the first time we saw Martian Manhunter prominently on the cover either. I don't know about you, but that's just gotta take spot number one. I need you to let me know, is there any slight appearance of Martian Manhunter or Aquaman on covers leading up to this point? If you've got them, I would like to know about them. It's a weird little bit of history that I find so strange that they didn't make their first cover until then. Guys, this was an absolute fun one to make. I love talking about this type of stuff so much. I got a ton of lists and top tens and cover ideas that I want to do. Let me know what you'd like to see. You can put a video suggestion down in the comments. And as always, guys, keep on hunting.